On World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, we highlight an issue that is said to affect between 4 and 10 percent of older adults in Canada as tactics to exploit the elderly continue to evolve. According to the Public Health Agency of Canada, only one in five incidents of elder abuse is ever reported to those who could actually help. Now, this makes it difficult to gauge exactly how severe this issue is in our country amid a rapidly aging population. Now, although elder abuse can come in many forms, such as neglect, violence, and emotional or psychological harm, financial abuse is said to be the most common type of elder abuse. Now, this can come in the form of identity theft, online or telephone scams, uh, abusing a power of attorney, and more. Well, joining us now to help give us her advice on how to protect your elderly family members from financial abuse is Ms. Erin McKenzie, the CEO and co-founder of Lighthouse Registry. Ma'am, welcome to Forum Daily. Hi, thank you for having me. So for some better understanding, why is financial abuse the most common form of elderly abuse? I think that's because it's the one that people have something to gain from. It's the one where people actually have the most to gain, really, if you think of all the forms of abuse. Um, older adults tend to have a lot of accumulated wealth, and they also tend to be more isolated and more vulnerable. So it makes them a very attractive target for both strangers and those very close to them. So we spoke uh, about the top three most common forms of financial abuse. That's identity theft, phone scams, and abusing power of attorney. Uh, can you really walk us through them in a little bit more detail and tell us what they could look like? Of course. So identity theft is kind of exactly what it sounds like. Somebody takes on your identity, pretends to be you, and tries to take control of your assets. So one common application of that would be real estate fraud. We've been hearing a lot about that in the news recently, where somebody basically pretends to be a homeowner and either sells a property or mortgages with it without the owner's knowledge. And seniors are a target for it because they often tend to have unmortgaged homes. Um, phone scams, also exactly what they sound like. Somebody calls you and basically tries to get you to send them money by manipulating you through some kind of story. So, I mean, a common one, you get the CRA verbal calls all the time. Um, one specific one targeting seniors is something called a grandparent scam, where basically somebody calls and pretends to be basically a grandparent of this older person. They pretend to be in trouble and they say, hey, send me, usually it's under $10,000. That amount is easier to sort of transfer without problems. But essentially, they want you to send the money immediately to help this, this person in trouble. Um, power of attorney abuse, that's the third kind. That one's a little bit trickier. There's two main forms of it. One is somebody with a totally fake power of attorney, basically has a fake document and is sort of abusing that power entirely. The other one is where you actually have somebody with legitimate power of attorney who's abusing their powers under it. So maybe they're using that power of attorney to benefit themselves or they're sort of exceeding the purview of what was intended when they were granted that power. It's very concerning to hear about these various forms of financial abuse against the elderly. Now, what's even more <laughs> concerning for me, at least, is that financial abuse can come from family or even a close friend. So where do you draw that boundary to protect yourself, even from your loved ones? It's really hard, actually. Family members, adult children, are generally the most common perpetrators of basically financial abuse against older adults. So I think of all financial abuse as something between seven, 70 percent of cases. It's usually um, an adult child or a close family member of the person who's doing it. Um, as for a sort of boundary between what's abuse and what isn't, it's really hard to tell. Um, people are allowed to make bad decisions, but it's when you enter into a situation where someone is being manipulated or there's a capacity issue where it really becomes a problem. So sort of knowing where that line is, it is hard. So I think the best advice is to stay close to those who you care about, stay close to people that you love, um, and essentially... I mean, another bright line test that I have, if something is secret, that's usually a problem. So think about transparency. If people are trying to keep things hush hush, not let anyone know about it, that's usually a red flag. There's something worth investigating. And uh, just uh, uh, growing on that uh, answer of yours, what are some other telltale signs or maybe key questions uh, that people should ask uh, just to uh, ensure that they are not being financially abused? Um, I mean, in terms of it's really challenging to sort of know what questions to ask or sort of know what's going on. The advice that's out there, generally it's sort of, is things where if you're in a, a vulnerable situation, you can't really do yourself. So it's like, don't sign anything if you don't know what you're signing. Um, you know, make sure to ask lots of questions. Um, you know, if you have got strangers in your life, um, you know, new people, I guess basically if you've got new people in your life who are trying to isolate you, that's definitely sort of a red flag that's concerning. But it's really case by case and it's really specific to sort of, your own situation. So I think it's important that you have an awareness if you're an older person that you may be victimized at some point and try to basically just be as aware as possible. 
prepare, like preparation, I think is key. So having your will, having your power of attorney, setting up a trusted contact with your bank or your financial advisor, all those are important things to do. Um, and then just really being communicative with those around you. So those that you care about, that you love, that you trust to make sure that, you know, they're looking in on you and you're keeping them informed as to what's going on in your life.